Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMic.com. Welcome to the Michael Arts Show. I'm Michael Arts. Thanks so much for joining us. I am so excited today. It snowed this morning. Now it's beautiful out in New York, and it is finally warming up. It's so weird. Snowed and getting warmer. It's like Colorado, but in New York. Not bad. All right. Many ways to get in touch with us. First of all, you can reach us on Twitter and Instagram at BeTerrificTV. In addition to that, send us an email, connect at BeTerrific.com. And my favorite way to connect with us is going to our IRC chat on BeTerrific.com slash live. All you have to do is go to BeTerrific.com slash live, scroll down under the live video player, and you will see an IRC chat. Join and create a login and come back often. We'll get to know you. You'll get to know us. You can interact with other viewers. And, of course, you can ask questions that we'll ask on air. You can also make statements. i got to tell you something. It's a lot of fun. We do it 24 hours a day. We check in all the time. So you got to join that. It is BeTerrific.com slash live, and you just scroll underneath the video player, and you'll see the IRC chat. Now, we do this show every day, Monday through Friday, from 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern, so don't miss a single episode, and you can download our app so you don't, app.BeTerrific.com for iOS, Kindle, and Android. Kindle, that's crazy, right? Well, some people have Kindle Fire, so they want it. All right. Totally cool. Guys, uh, I'm really excited about baseball as the weather gets warmer here. And as the uh, New York Mets pitching staff goes from, wow, we're going to be amazing, to, wow, everybody's injured. Um, and the Yankees seem like they've fallen off the face of the earth. I don't know. Maybe I have to get a new team to root for. Or maybe it's a player individually. Maybe it's a cause more than a player, right? Well, here to talk baseball and a whole lot more is Pete McCarthy, from WOR Radio. The Sports Zone is the show, and he does a lot more. He also does Nets basketball pre- and post-game and all sorts of other stuff. And I know Pete a long time. He's a good dude and a smart guy and knows sports really well. We used to work together at MLB.com. Pete, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. I, I didn't realize it snowed this morning. I must have slept through that, man. You must have slept That's through crazy. that. That's crazy. Well, look, you're a radio nice guy. Channel. You're a radio guy, so you, you what do you wake up at one o'clock in the afternoon? Yeah, you know thereabouts. <laughs> I want to do promos for the radio station. Uh, y you know, I, I just want to be the guy who does the sweeper voice. Like I feel like, see, I was doing it before. I was joking with some people earlier in the day. And I was like, "Hey, it's W O R," but really, W O R is a legendary station in New York, and I'd have to do it more like. Tell me how I do, right? It's uh, it'd have to be like this. It'd be like, "You're listening to W O R." Here's Pete McCarthy. That sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty good. It's yeah. like uh, Letterman style, you know? There you go. I, I think that that's the way uh, I would do it, and I think it works out well for, for the show. The Sports Zone's a great name for a show, and you can cover anything. Let's talk baseball first. What do you think's, what do you think's the deal with Pete Rose? I, I mean, that's the cause I was kind of alluding to. A lot of news has been made about Pete Rose, not only uh, the last few years, but the last few days, and, and now it seems to be coming to the light of day. Uh, he's finally years ago admitted that, okay, he gambled on baseball. And I talked to Daryl Strawberry a long time ago who said, you know, realistically, Pete deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Let's put him in. What's, what's the deal? Well, I mean, you know that uh, based on what he did in his playing career, he certainly deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But, uh, you know, obviously – the number one rule in baseball, you're not allowed to gamble on it. doesn't matter if you're betting your team to win or lose or whatever the heck it might be. And, uh, you know, he did that once he became a manager. He signed, uh, you know, documents saying he was out of baseball forever. And, you know, Bud Selig was more than happy to let him live up to that. Didn't even want to meet uh, with Pete Rose. But now, of course, there's a new commissioner in Rob Manfred. Uh, Rose is 73 years old. You had the All-Star Game in Cincinnati this year, uh, which is, of course, his hometown, also where he spent the majority of his career. So, I mean, it's the it's the perfect time, I think, for Rose to give it one last shot, to try to get reinstated, to try to get into the Hall of Fame, to be a part of you know, everything that would be, uh, you know, the All-Star Game in Cincinnati. So, you know, Rob Manfred seems willing to listen. How far it goes beyond that is is still to be determined. Well, I think, first of all, uh, it, it's interesting that the first order of business uh, that Manfred really has and is tackling, other than Josh Hamilton's 
relapse, right, is the Pete Rose situation. But I think it should be tackled. And I think, first of all, I got to say this. I just got to stop for a second and say, isn't it a State Farm commercial? I think it is. I, I don't know what it is, but I love that Pete Rose commercial where his wife yeah, says. Yeah, Skechers. You know, huh? It's Skechers. Skechers. Uh, he's not right? allowed in the hall. Yeah, you're not allowed in the house. hall, Pete. Even at home, <laughs> I love that commercial. But the reality is it makes me realize, and maybe this has even helped, right, his cause. The guy's not – how much longer is he going to be here? What are we waiting for, for him to die to put him in? He deserves to be in the hall as a player. Uh, I think that maybe it can stay. It can state that as a coach, he, uh, as a manager, he made these mistakes. He admitted his mistakes. And maybe he's not a Hall of Fame manager, but he's a Hall of Fame player. And by the way uh, – the last I checked, there are a lot of Hall of Fame players in there that did a lot worse things than bet on the game. Now, I know that that is the big sin, and I am not going to knock on that, but I do think that you do have a big question as we are facing now with the steroid issue, and I'm not going to weigh in on that one way or the other. But Pete Rose, as far as we know, I think that they either need to say he bet on baseball as a player or we got to reinstate him and let him in the Hall of Fame. And then from there, maybe he doesn't get to coach, maybe he doesn't get to manager be a manager and maybe there's a story that goes into it but he certainly paid more than his price on this i think uh and 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 to me he deserves as a player to be in the hall of fame and that's what you've got to do i i agree i like the morality clause but if you're going to do that you're going to say everybody has to be moral well i think we might have to re-examine a lot of players and we start there with ty cobb probably maybe even before him christy matthews is supposed to not be such a nice guy and uh i'm sure that babe ruth had his uh you know, misgivings as well. So I, I, I think that, you know, Pete Rose should go in the Hall of Fame, and why not now? Because what are we going to wait for this guy to die? I think at the shift of a new commissioner is the right time. Well, and it's certainly something that gets revisited now. You know, and this is the number one rule. It's in every clubhouse. You're not allowed to bet on baseball. Um, you know, and he did so as a manager, which – yeah, you could affect the outcomes of games. Even if he's pitching, picking, um, you know, his team to win on a given night. You know, how does that affect his bullpen usage the nights before, or, or that game, or this or that? I mean, so, wait, I mean so, but I, I'm not so worried about the hall with him. I think with Pete Rose, he yes, he's he's served a long punishment here. It's been 25 years uh, since he's been outside of the game, and he loves baseball. We actually had him on the show about three weeks ago, and he didn't want to talk about any of this, but you know, we just kind of chatted about the state of the game and guys he likes to watch and he knows you know all about who the best players are and you know what's their ticks i mean he watches baseball every single night he's uh he's great to talk to about it he loves the game and i don't think he should ever wear a, a uniform again to be honest i don't really care if he gets into the hall of fame or not um you know he he certainly has you know picked his bed either way but i'd like to see him at least back in somewhat of the good graces of the game have an opportunity to be a part of the all-star game in his hometown this summer and, you know, start to, you know, open the door a crack for, um, you know, a potential Hall of Fame thing, which, which isn't cake anyway. Even if Rob Manfred says, hey, he's fully reinstated, that doesn't mean he's going to the Hall. He'll either go on the writer's ballot and the writers will have to vote him in with 75 percent or he might end up on the Veterans Committee ballot which could be a, a tough ride for him with a lot of former players and um, you know a lot of uh, you know people been around the game a long time voting on that committee. Well, I got to tell you, I think both committees, whether it's the writers or the veterans committee, I think they wind up voting him in. I got to be honest. Um, I think that he's probably past the point where he cares. I will tell you uh, a couple of funny anecdotes about this. One is that I know that Brandon Steiner has had him sign over a thousand balls that say Pete Rose HOF, and so. If he were to get in or po post his, his, his death, uh, get in, uh, Brandon Steiner will be sitting on a fortune, a small fortune here. Uh, a great marketing move. I almost think that Pete Rose maybe doesn't want to be in the Hall of Fame because he gets, I think he generates more revenue not being in the Hall of Fame. And he stays in, the, he, I mean, he stayed relevant for 25 years. How many other players do we talk about every spring training? Uh, every all-star game, every time the Hall of Fame is elected, and every Hall of Fame induction. There's nobody else we talk about every year, like we talk about Pete Rose, especially if they haven't been in the game for 25 years. I, I will say this. I take cheating and lying very seriously, and I think he needs to be punished for it, and I think he was punished for it. You know, 25 years, he could have gone and murdered somebody, and he'd be out out of jail this year, right? Uh, potentially, right? Um, so the thing is, I think that, 
there's no difference in my mind between what Pete Rose did um, and shooting. You know, you're saying, yes, he affected the outcomes of games, but so does a guy who shoots up steroids, hits a home run that he wouldn't have traditionally hit, winds up being the game winner. That affects the outcome of games, too. Maybe a guy used it to recover and got back faster, and the team won two games that they shouldn't have won. Maybe a pitcher threw a little bit harder and they won two games. So I think if you're going to cheat, it's cheating. It doesn't matter. If you're going to break the rules, it's breaking the rules. But I think in this well, case. you got to use pine tar, throw them out of the game, you know? Right. Uh, it is different. I mean, look, even now, if a guy gets caught using steroids, what's the punishment? You know, it's 50 games. It's not a lifetime banishment. And these, you know, if you want to compare, uh, you know, punishments with, with different crimes, I mean, this is the ultimate cardinal sin in Major League Baseball. It has been for decades. No one else has violated this, at least since the Black Sox scandal. Uh, nearly a hundred years ago now. Well, so w- I, it, wait it a is, second. It, it's the biggest thing. Nobody else has been caught violating it. Sure. Nobody else has been caught. It doesn't mean nobody else has done it. I, I'm not going to say people have. I'm just saying nobody else has been caught. And I get what you're saying, but to me, it, it, cheating is cheating. Um, and 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 so I, I get it. And I, I think that you know, and I'm looking at the chat room. Digital Phil, Ben, they all think that he's paid his price and that he should be back in baseball and, and given the chance. I agree. He should never be able to put on a uniform or work in a front office uh, office again. I, I, I don't think that that should be allowed. Um, if So it's not a full reinstatement here, and I, I think that's what yeah. you know Rob Manfred has to really look at. And there's got to be a gray area where you can you know bring Pete Rose back oh. into the fold. Fans want to see him. He's good for the game, at least as far as well, uh, you know, being an ambassador and such. And it's just a matter of finding the right the right spot for him. And I, I think that's what the argument is now more than just stay banished forever or you know welcome him in all the way. I'm going to lay out what I think, and then I want you to lay out what you think. I think you you give him the ability to be a broadcaster because I think that nobody will touch him now. Whether he's allowed to be or not allowed to be, Fox isn't hiring him, right? And you said he's a great analyst. So give him the ability to be – uh, a, a broadcaster, not a scout, not in the front office, because you don't want him near young minds and shaping young minds, and you don't want him in a front office, and you don't want him to be a manager uh, in any way, shape, or form. You could allow him to maybe be a diplomat for the team, shake hands at, you know, g- attend baseball games, shake hands in the luxury suites. We see a lot of this. Go sign autographs uh, officially for Major League Baseball for the team, the, the Reds. Um, but I think you don't celebrate him with the All-Star game. That's my personal opinion. I don't think you celebrate him because of what he did. And I think you can celebrate his accomplishments and not celebrate him. And by doing that, you have to keep him Maybe you can keep let him in the ballpark, but you don't allow him on the field for the celebration. You don't recognize him in that way. You can, again, play clips of him uh, breaking the hit record, doing all this stuff, the way he hustled. I mean, there are certainly some really good aspects to Pete Rose's game that you can teach kids lessons about, how hard he worked. I mean, when I was a kid, Pete Rose was the model, right? That's how hard you wanted to work. That's how hard-nosed you wanted to be. That's how hard you had to try. So there are some benefits, and he can also be used in a positive way for kind of a scared straight message. Baseball takes this very seriously. You may never play the game again. You may never uh, walk on a baseball field again. Don't do this. So I I think that and, and he can be used in many different positive ways, and I would like to see that happen if he's ready for it. And obviously Bob Manfred has to decide that. But I think that there are a lot of places in baseball you keep him away, including I don't like the idea of celebrating Pete Rose. I like the idea of celebrating his accomplishments. And I think you can do that by putting it by if he gets elected into the Hall of Fame by putting him in in a certain way. And maybe he he's I, I don't know, maybe he can't even make a speech. He can go and take pictures, but he can't make a speech because he cannot be celebrated. I would agree with that. But it's the accomplishments that you celebrate because still somebody put up an amazing amount of hits and you sure. can't take that away. And there wasn't a performance enhancing drug as far as we know that he was using that helped him do that. So I, I think you can celebrate the accomplishments, but not celebrate the man. Maybe it sounds a little contradictory, but that's how I feel. What What are your thoughts? How would you position this? Uh, you know, like I said, with the Hall of Fame, I think that's something Manfred could probably just pass the buck on where if he, you know, reinstates him enough that the Hall of Fame has said any player who is banished from the game is not up for the Hall of Fame. If Manfred brings him in enough that, you know, the Hall of Fame will say, OK, we'll put him on whatever ballot he fits on. Uh, that would be fine with me. And, and you know, let the writers, let the Veterans Committee, um, you know, sort all that out. But I would like to see Pete Rose as part of the All-Star game. You think about Cincinnati baseball, you think about Pete Rose. You know, that's that's what the town's about. I'm sure the fans would love it. You get a, a thunderous ovation. And, uh, you know, even if it's just the 
opening pitch. You know, he goes out and, and throws a pitch to Johnny Bench. I mean, who wouldn't love to see that uh, for an all-star game in Cincinnati? So I think there's a space to, uh, you know, celebrate him a little bit. I, I think that's fine. Um, and, and you know, again, you know, now is the time to do it. I also think it'll be interesting, you know, the politics of all this a little bit. You know, Rob Manfred, uh, you know, was Bud Selig's guy. And, you know, his right-hand man uh, over the last few years, and Bud Selig was very much not not a fan of Pete Rose, didn't want to meet with Pete Rose, didn't want to talk about this kind of thing with him. Uh, so, you know, I wonder if we get some kind of indication of what kind of commissioner Manfred will be. Will he, you know, do a lot of the same things and just carry on what Bud Selig has done for 20-plus years, or will he be a bit of his own man? And it, it seems that he is at least open-minded to talk about different rule changes, uh, you know, modernizing the game. And, and obviously meeting with Pete Rose. And, and Rose got to say the right things, too. So, um, you know, I, I think, you know, they'll have their meeting, hopefully. And, you know, at that point, uh, we'll see what Rob Manfred feels about it. I think he's going to be his own man. I think we can already see that. And I think it's good. I think we're seeing a lot of commissioners that are being their own men, like uh, uh, obviously like uh, Adam Silver in the NBA doing his own thing, kind of following in that strict tradition that David Stern set up, but kind of doing his own thing as well. Um, last thing I want to ask you about this uh, Pete Rose thing, I guess, is, you know, realistically, do you feel that this, I mean, this is very early on in Bob Manfred's career, but do you feel that this leaves a lasting legacy on Bob Manfred either way uh, as, as how he is going to be as a commissioner? Oh, if he's only the commissioner for a few years, I guess it would be a lasting legacy, but I, I think he's planning on more than that, so... Uh, it's hard to say. This is a big decision in baseball history, and there's no question about it. It'll be part of his legacy. Uh, will it be the entirety of it? I would think not. But, um, you know, this is big. A lot of commissioners have dealt with this before. I mean, this has been passed on down the line. Now it's in Manfred's seat. And I mean, you got to think, you know, Pete Rose, 73 years old. The last commissioner lasted 20 something years. We'll see how long Manfred lasts. But, uh, if uh, if he's going to be in that seat for a long time, he ultimately is going to be you know holding the gavel to Pete Rose and might be the last one who makes a decision one way or the other. I will say this. I never understood why Selig kind of lured him out and lured him into admitting that he had bet on baseball and gave him the hope that they would get together and that he'd reconsider. And well, then Pete Rose sold the book in order to, you know, it, it, it's part of his admittance of that well so. i'm not saying that but it, there was a lot of like back channeling and and all this talk that seal league wanted to meet with him and was going to meet with him and this might help it definitely there was a part of that that was selling the book but i i think that uh pete wrote a couple of books before that he certainly could have admitted in any of those books that he did it so i think that there you know i always thought that that was a weird situation but it, it kind of reminds me of house of cards what's going on and as you talk about like well sure manfred could pass the buck and say it's the hall of fame who knows what back channeling goes on there and then winds up uh uh, being, uh, well, you know, you're voting, but if you vote, then blah, 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 you know how it goes. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. At least that's how my mind races, uh, having watched House of Cards last night. Um, <laughs> I want to see Sabo at the All-Star game. There uh, you go. Come on. Uh, if you're talking Cincinnati baseball and, and Johnny Bench, of course, that'll be cool. And there are a lot of other players that uh, are going to be amazing to see at the All-Star game. Let's talk about real quick. I, I want to talk about a, a bunch of things, and I, I know we only have a few more minutes with you, but let's talk about baseball in general. I mean, every day I open the paper and there seems like there's another injury with a Mets pitcher. And it was, oh, we're going to be the greatest staff ever. We're all set up. It's going to be five years of great Mets baseball. This is the heart and soul of the team. This is the core. This is what we need. Needed. We needed pitching, and then everybody's injured for seems like the season uh, and and serious injuries, elbows, shoulders. Uh, what do you make of all this with the Mets, and and where can they go with this? Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, Josh Hedgen, Tommy John surgery is supposed to be their lone lefty really out of the bullpen this year. Uh, Zach Wheeler, Tommy John surgery, and back to back days. The Mets found out about these two injuries, and Wheeler is really set up to be their number two. Um, you know, he wasn't Cy Young caliber pitcher or anything like that last year, but he's really expected to take a leap forward this season and be the Robin to Matt Harvey's Batman. Uh, and obviously that won't be the case now. So it, it's been a tough blow for the Mets. Uh, it, it is a position where they have a lot of depth, at least as far as the starters go. Uh, they have Dylan G, who is a, you know going to be in the bullpen this year. Now he'll go back into the rotation. He's more than capable. They have two highly touted prospects in Noah Syndergaard and Steven Matz who are just about ready to contribute. So I don't think it's a death knell uh, to the Mets season, but it, it certainly is a, a shame. And I, I think it's just a, a larger issue in baseball. You know, all these young pitchers who come up, 
they're throwing 95 miles per hour plus, and it, it just seems every week one of them is going down and, and needing Tommy John surgery. And all those you know, rookies that come up and just wow us, like a Steven Strasburg or a Jose Fernandez or a Matt Harvey, we've all seen them go under the knife. And now you know, another young guy, high velocity, high upside pitcher, and Zach Wheeler undergoes Tommy John surgery too. It's, uh, it's a big problem, Major League Baseball. And while there are a lot of theories out there, now, these kids are throwing too many pitches in high school and in college, and um, you know maybe they're you know uh, you know just not built to to handle the velocity that's there. I mean, there's all kinds of theories out there, but nobody seems to have a concrete reason as to why so many pitchers are, are undergoing this surgery. And the one thing that's on the bright side, they do come back, and you know it's about an eighty percent recovery rate. And within twelve to eighteen months, Zach Wheeler will be back on the hill, and more than likely. He'll look a lot like the guy he was last year. Yeah, and 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 uh, and and that is exciting, but the, you know it really you know hurts the team obviously and, sure. and puts them in a bad position when everybody was excited. But also you got Matt Harvey who's coming back from surgery, and we hope that it'll be the same. And don't know what about the Yankees? Uh, the Yankees just to me seem like they're headed towards ir- irrelevancy. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the '80s with the Yankees in my mind. You got this a rod question mark. You don't know what you can do with. You got Teixeira aging. Uh, you don't have, you really don't have a closer or a great closer. Your starting pitching staff is questionable. I mean, for the Yankees, it's questionable. I guess for any other team, it'd be pretty good. Um, you don't have Jeter, and 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 for what you want to say about Jeter is Jeter wasn't uh, the end all be all. He wasn't the greatest player. He didn't win on an everyday basis for them. He didn't make the difference, but he was a leader. He was solid, and he came through in the clutch almost every time. And if you could make it into the playoffs, you knew Jeter would be there. So what do you think of this Yankees team? I feel like they're heading towards irrelevancy. Yeah, I, you're used to seeing the Yankees with star after star after star. And when they go on the road, everybody wants to go see the Yankees come into town. I mean, now if you're going to go to the ballpark, who are you going there to see? Uh, you know, Alex Rodriguez, all right, he might be enough of a draw, and he's you know looked okay in spring training thus far, you know, especially considering I hadn't played in a year and a half, 39 years old, the hip injuries, all this kind of thing. But, uh, you know, he's been okay. So maybe he's a little bit of a draw. But, you know, Carlos Belchon, Jacoby Ellsbury, um, Brian McCann, solid players, don't get me wrong, but they're not the superstars we're used to seeing with the Yankees. You know, people go to the park and hope Mariano Rivera would close out a game or uh, just to see Derek Jeter, as we saw over and over last year. Uh, so, you know, one thing about the Yankees, their bullpen is really, really good. And, you know, in modern day baseball in 2015, that could carry you a little bit. Uh, it really can. And the Yankees have a lot of questions in that rotation, a lot of injury problems, but. Um, you know, that bullpen might be able to keep them afloat for a while. If they somehow did get into the postseason, that, that would be very dangerous. Um, you know, we've seen what a, a great bullpen can do. Look at the Kansas City Royals last year. Uh, but, you know, that division is very even. Uh, there's not a great team there, but a, a lot of very good, solid baseball teams. And you'd probably say the Yankees are about third or fourth in that pecking order. Um you know, it's, it's a little different in the Bronx. Yeah, I mean, you could easily debate who's going to have more wins this year, the Mets or the Yankees, and that hasn't been a realistic debate in this town for a very long time. Very, very true. Uh, I would say the interesting thing is for the Yankees, you mentioned no superstars, but in, in the 90s, the mid-90s, uh, the Yankees didn't really have any superstars. I mean, they had – but they had a great team still, and I don't feel like they have a great team. Like you said, they're third or fourth in that pecking order. I mean, with Scott Brocious and, uh, you know, even Chuck Knobloch played well at, uh, until he – couldn't throw anymore and and then you had you know uh tino uh joined the team but even before that you still had you just had you had paul o'neill and you had bernie i you know what it, it always amazes me everybody in new york sees bernie as a superstar Ev- outside of new york and and from my vantage point bernie wasn't a superstar and isn't he was a really great player but not a superstar and so i don't think those yankees teams really had any superstars until you get into the later 90s uh and early 2000s and you start you know, uh, compiling guys. But to me, um, those were great teams of known guys, but nobody who would knock you over. You, nobody who you'd go, this guy's going to be on the cover of my program if he was on the Reds or the Tigers or any other team in baseball other than the Yankees. And so when you look at it, I kind of feel that's kind of where they're going back to, except they're doing it with aging guys who aren't superstars. And 
I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of A Rod because, you know, yeah, he seems like an okay player, but he's 39 and he's slow and old and probably going to break down. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them this year. But I, I, I think unless something really changes, they're headed towards irrelevancy, and it's disappointing. I, I root for both New York teams. I'm much more of a Mets fan. Uh, I used to listen to Bob Murphy on the radio on WOR, your station. Uh, hello again, everybody. Welcome to another game. You know, welcome to Shea Stadium. It's a, it's a beautiful day here at Shea Stadium. Uh, and listen to that, it's ingrained in my mind. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I do like the Yankees as well. What about the rest of the league? Is there a team that stands out for you or a team you think is going to shock everybody this year? A team to shock everybody this year? Um, yeah, I think the Marlins can be very good there in, in the NL East. They had a lot of pieces to that lineup, uh, you know, a leadoff guy and – and D. Gordon, we'll see if he gets on base enough to really show off the speed that he has. But, you know, Mike Morris had a, a healthy John Carlos Stanton. Remember, they lost him, um, you know, in the latter stages last year to a, you know, fastball to the face. And he's just a, an unbelievable player for them. And it, it, they were on the outskirts of the wild card hunt until he went down. And that was pretty much it. But they got some good young pitching, too. You know, Jose Fernandez should be back about midway through the season. Um, yeah, I like the Marlins to to potentially uh, make some noise there in, in the NL East. I mean, you know, beating out the Nationals were probably the best team in baseball. Uh, that may not be realistic, but, you know, the Marlins, if they get into the playoffs, I mean, they can make some noise. And to me, it, there's two different seasons. It's survive the 162, be one of the 10 teams to get into October, and then what works for you over 162 doesn't necessarily work for you in October. You know, all of a sudden, you only need to have four starters, uh, you need to have three or four power arms in the bullpen, and you could just go to those bullpen arms every single game because you have more days off. You know, the offenses seem to shrink up uh, once you get to October. So I just think it becomes a different kind of game, and that's why you, know, you saw two wild card teams like the Royals and the Giants built around pitching all of a sudden make a run. You know, over 162, uh, you hit to get to the postseason, but then you got to be able to pitch to get through the postseason. Is that different from when we were kids? Because I feel like when we were kids, and maybe it's because there were no wild card teams and, and you, you really had to excel. And then even when the first wild card teams were instituted, I still feel this was probably the case. But when we were kids, I feel like you had to dominate the season and you maybe you didn't have to be first the entire season but you had to be second at least uh, and if you were anything but you were completely out of the conversation and I feel like it's changed now and that's more like hockey and basketball and maybe even football and maybe that's a good thing for fans because teams that we never would have seen get in there get in there get a chance it makes it more exciting we get this parody that everybody talks about but on the other hand there's something it's one thing to say I got to survive uh, an NFL season and then the postseason is anybody's game it's another thing to say I'm going to play 162 games and I just have to survive that in good enough shape to make it to the postseason and then it's different it feels like you're writing off 162 games yeah I mean I, I think if you win you know 100 something games over 162 you're pretty dang good and uh, you know people shouldn't go nuts if you don't play well in the playoffs over the course of three games or something like that for instance and the Angels and the Nationals, they'll look at their 2014 seasons as failures, yet <laughs> they were the best teams over 162 and got knocked out the best of five to start things off. I mean, you know, that's that's tough to me. Um, but, yeah, that's the way it is right now. And, uh, you know, it's was, it was different when we were kids. Obviously, you didn't have so many teams make the playoffs. But, you know, just look at the trade deadline now. Uh, there aren't too many sellers out there because you have – 24 teams usually that realistically could say hey we're still in this thing you know we're a five game winning streak away from being in that second wild card spot and you know what i mean uh the way these things go it's better for the business of the game i think it's better for fans of you know a lot of teams your team's going to be in in it at least until you know mid july mid august um you know rather than you have a bad april and and the season's pretty much behind you by memorial day so uh, you know, that's that's the, the push and pull of it all. But, yeah, if you're going to play 162 games, I wouldn't mind seeing the regular season mean a little more than it does. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, and, and there's so much I want to talk to you about and, and keep going. You're such a, a very talented guy on the radio, and you're such a smart mind, uh, especially with baseball. Uh, I, I want to thank you for coming on. Tell you you're welcome anytime. I'd love to ha have talked a little bit more about Stanton and his deal in Miami and, you know, why would you sign a long-term deal? There's a whole Sports Illustrated article about why would he sign a long-term deal if they're going to break up the team after a year or two, which seems he says, oh, it's not going to happen. The guy's spending this kind of money on me. Yeah, whatever. This is the guy's M.O. 
uh, Jeff Lorry. Uh, that's what he does, and he'll probably do it again. He wants to either get a winner or get as close to he as he can, fill some seats, sell the team off, and and do it again in a couple years. But he's got an out clause, and we could talk about this all day another time, as well as some other stuff, and I would love to. I want to thank you so much for coming on. But real quick before I let you go, just tell everybody about the Sports Zone, what the show's like, um, and, and, and they can listen not only – uh, if they're in New York on the radio, but you can listen online too, which is great. I love that. And that's uh, WOR710.com. And so walk everybody through the show. Yeah, you can check it on the iHeartRadio app uh, as well. But uh, weeknights, 6 to 9, uh, talking all New York sports. Uh, we do that for another few weeks. And then opening day for the New York Mets, Mets flagship station. So, uh, you know, Mets baseball will start was April 6th, uh, that Monday opening day. Uh, I do a show an hour before first pitch, Mets on deck, 30-minute uh, show. And then after the game, take your phone calls uh, and, and talk some Mets with the fans. Um, and we do that every single game. They're all 162. So uh, pumped up to get it all started up and, you know, another grind. And, you know, it should still be a, a fun season for the Mets, even with the injuries the last few weeks. The, I think they are a team that uh, will be at least in the mix over the course of the, uh, the full 162 this year. Well, uh, I hope they are. I, I know I'd like that, and so would everybody in, uh, in, in the New York metro area. We'd love to root for the Mets, even Yankees fans, while they quietly do it uh, and, and, and say that they don't and love to hate on Mets fans. Uh, as soon as the Mets start getting good and the Yankees aren't, you find a lot of Yankees fans in uh, Shea Stadium watching <laughs> some good baseball. Or City Field now. I still call it Shea. I, every time I'm with You're not I'm, the only one. I, Every time I'm with Straw, I, I, I talk about Shea, and he's like, We're, what are you talking about? I wasn't at Shea two days ago. It doesn't <laughs> exist. And he does the same thing. Like two minutes later, he'll be like, yeah, so I was at Shea the other day. I'm like, you mean City Field, right? He's like, oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Pete, thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we'll get you on again soon, and we'll keep in touch. Uh, it's good to see you, and uh, I appreciate it. So that's the Sports Zone on WOR 710. You can also listen to it on the iHeartRadio app. Thanks so much. Uh, you're awesome. We'll be back right after this with a whole lot more of the Michael Arts' show. Don't go anywhere. At Be Terrific, we do a lot of events and bring you a lot of great coverage. But we need to spread the word about Be Terrific, and you guys do a great job of doing that for us. We really appreciate that. But to do it fully, we need branding. And when we do these events, we need to be able to set up quickly and easily and have a home base to be able to create a set, protect our gear, and shield our talent from lights of the event we're in so we can add our own lighting and hang our cameras. We've teamed up with EasyUp to do that for Comic-Con and going forward. They gave us a great shelter that takes no time to set up and also is toolless. It's phenomenal and it's reasonably priced. So whether you have a production company, a media house, or you want to just sell some products at an event, what you need is an EasyUp top. An easy up top is phenomenal. You can do all sorts of branding. You can add side rails like we have. You can add a back wall like we have. And you'll get aerial branding, on the ground branding, and a place to put all your stuff, protect your team, and call home. It's perfect. What you want to do is go to easyup.com. That's easyup.com. Talk to Wayne Dove. He's a sales guy there. He's amazing. He's become a good friend, and he took good care of us. He's the one who got us our tent. They've got great people there, they've got a great team, and they've got a great rich storied history. There's no better shelter, there's no faster shelter than EasyUp. It sets up in minutes, it's fire tested and fire rated, and it's fire retardant. They're really, really structurally sound, and they look beautiful. How could you beat that? Oh yeah, I forgot, they're reasonably priced. So that's the kicker. Go to EasyUp.com. Tell Wayne that Be Terrific sent you. They'll take good care of you, don't worry, and have your company represented well at your next event. And it only takes minutes to set up and break down and then set up again. Look how amazing it looks. I am so excited about this. Thank you, Easy Up. Introducing a portable solar powered charging solution that moves at the speed of life. Family vacations, long road trips, in the airport around campus, on the trail, the lake, or the links. The Duoflex puts the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. With a removable battery pack, dual configuration, and a weather-resistant, rugged design, Duoflex fits every lifestyle and every activity. Freedom to live, to move, to play. 
to be fully charged. You know, I'm a gearhead and a tech nut, just like you are, and I love DSLR photography and video. And there's no better place to find out about rumors and the truth and get gear reviews than Planet5D.com. Anything DSLR, you need to go to Planet5D.com. My friend Mitch, he started it. It's really a tremendous blog. Go to Planet5D.com today and check out the great content and great reviews they have there. And figure out what camera or lenses you need for your next project. Of course, they talk lighting and audio too. So they'll help you with that as well. They've got a great forum. And on top of it, you might be watching this content because of them. They're posting our coverage on Planet5D.com. So thank you, Mitch. And go to Planet5D.com to check out a lot of great information on a lot of great cameras. Hi, my name is Salam, and this is Hashtag Q. It is a touchscreen display that wirelessly streams all my social media feeds. It is perfect for sharing with my friends and family and also saving my favorite photos so I can take the hashtag cube about anywhere. Well, who would want the hashtag cube? Well, just about everyone. Instagram lovers, photographers, foodies, parents, grandparents, pet lovers, fashionistas, beauty buffs, art lovers, Travelers. Really, the story is this. Whatever you're into, Hashtag Cube brings it to you on a beautiful screen that you can share with family and friends everywhere. Hashtag Cube is available now, so order yours today using the link below. And don't forget to pick one up for your friends and family as well. Hi, I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for watching Be Terrific. We hope you're enjoying the great content. Our team here works tirelessly to put together an amazing lineup of content for you, and they want to thank you for watching. So on behalf of them, thank you. Now, a few months back, we brought you the story of Tina Katz. It's an inspiring, uplifting, and miraculous story, and it's not over yet. Tina is a good friend of mine, and she's the sister of Be Terrific co-founder Peter Poon. Unfortunately, she was in a terrible accident just before the new year, and she lost her legs. But Tina finally got prosthetics with your help, and now she still needs your help because her fight isn't over yet. She still needs to accomplish a lot. To find out more, go to TinaVersTheSevenTrain.com. You can read all about her story, and you can find out exactly what she needs. And there you can donate, because it takes a community to help get Tina back on her feet. Her story is so inspiring. I hope that one day she'll go public and tell her story to everybody so that she can do the speaking circuit and uplift a lot of people. But right now I know she's uplifting and inspiring you just like she does me. Don't worry, at Be Terrific, we'll keep you up to date on her progress and do more stories so that you can follow how she's doing. But you can also do that on TinaVersTheSevenTrain.com. And of course, you can go there to donate. Please do. I'm Michael Artsis. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And keep it locked to Be Terrific. Introducing a portable, solar-powered charging solution that moves at the speed of life. Family vacations, long road trips, in the airport, around campus, on the trail, the lake, or the links. The Duoflex puts the power of the sun in the palm of your hand. With a removable battery pack, dual configuration, and a weather-resistant, rugged design, Duoflex fits every lifestyle and every activity. Freedom to live, to move, to play, to be fully charged. My favorite two devices are my iPhone and iPad. I really love them. And I really want to ditch the laptop so that I can just use the iPhone and iPad on the road. Well, if I do that, that means that I have to be able to bring my Be Terrific content with me. And I'm so excited to announce that now you can. We teamed up with Como, C-O-M-O.com. You can go build your own app there to build our app. And we've got an amazing app. Not only is it in the Apple iTunes store, it's also in the Android store and the Amazon Kindle store. And you can get your app just by going to BeTerrific.com slash app. It's free 
and it's fun. You can interact with us and engage with us. You can follow us socially and you can watch all our content on the go, including our live stuff. And there's a whole lot more features here, including getting in touch with us. Go to BeTerrific.com slash app, pick which device you have, and it'll take you to the right store. You'll be able to download this app free and take us on the go. Have fun with it and do it now. And by the way, there's an events page so you can find out about all our coverage and events that are coming up. I'm Michael Artsis. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for supporting us and continue to enjoy our amazing content. Rode microphones are the official microphones of Be Terrific. Find out more at RodeMike.com. Welcome back to the Michael Arts' Show. I'm Michael Arts. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget, you can tweet at us, at BeTerrificTV on Twitter and Instagram. You can also email us, connect at BeTerrific.com. And, of course, join our IRC chat. That's my favorite way to connect. Go to BeTerrific.com slash live. Go underneath the live video player, and you will be able to create a login and join the IRC chat. It is free. It is fun, and you can interact with us and the rest of the viewers. We're on the Michael Arts' Show live every Monday through Friday, 4 to 5 p.m., we're doing the New York Auto Show April 1st and 2nd all day long, so you're going to want to block out those entire days just to watch our coverage. And, of course, we've got NAB uh, from April 13th to the 16th in Las Vegas, Nevada. A whole lot more after that. We'll keep you updated on it and a lot of exciting stuff going on here. Uh, that was Pete McCarthy from WOR Radio. Pete is amazing, very talented and smart baseball mind. You can listen to his show on WOR Radio uh, in the iHeart Radio app, which is awesome. Please download it and go do that because it's a great show and you're not going to want to miss it. This guy really knows his baseball, and you can probably call in and ask him questions. So that's pretty cool. All right, uh, we've got another guest. She's joining us uh, via Skype, and I believe she's near Shea Stadium, City Field, uh, in Flushing area of New York. I think we're talking like Bayside maybe or... I don't know, Forest Hills. Anyway, the deal is you know this young lady because she's a good friend of the show and a good friend of mine. We've been with her in studio, and Tina is here to give us an update on her situation, which reminded me, Tina, that um, we should actually update that video that we have that we run uh, telling people your story. You've, you've got a remarkable story. Uh, just to refresh everybody's mind, uh, in uh, December of 2013, you were unfortunately hit by a subway in Grand Central Station. You lost uh, both legs. One above the uh, one above the knee and one below the knee. You've since gotten prosthetics and walked not only you not only walk but you walked up the stairs to get in here to do an interview and impressed and inspired all of our audience. So first of all, thanks so much for joining us and how you doing? No problem. I'm doing okay. I've got surgery coming up uh, this Friday. This Friday. Yes. What what are we doing now? You you kind of alluded to it when you were in studio that you might have to have some cleanup work done so that your uh, prosthetics would fit better and you would be pain free. Is that is that what we're going for? So the goal, the ultimate goal. I mean, it's for cleanup and stuff, but the ultimate goal is so that I could get more uh, flexion in my knee. So right now I can only bend it maybe fifty degrees. I can't like how you're sitting right now where your leg is somewhat you're kind of bent a little over 90 degrees so but to do stairs and other things properly you kind of need about 90 so the goal is for me to to be able to bend it more oh I, i'm sitting like this because i'm practicing for the squatty potty squatty potty.com i don't know if you you've seen that ad or heard that ad but it's a little bench you put under the toilet so you sit like this and you go better no okay well, anyway I, I, i'm a girl you have to squat no matter where you go when you're when you're going in public well but you like squat more squatty potty dot com. i can't even believe this is a product and 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 jill wants to get it for me so you should check <laughs> it out um i by the way i don't need any help i maybe i need a cork but not any help anyway so you're going for cleanup to get range of motion in your knee that'll be good um are you looking forward to this because i would think you'd be looking forward and excited because i think this is going to go great for you as soon as you get that range of motion we're talking august you know jack could be running with you jack could be running with me uh i'm i guess you know excited nervous uh fear of the unknown oh whether. there's no unknown don't be nervous you're gonna do great <laughs> 
I, I'm excited. Now, have you asked the surgeons like any questions about? Uh, because why aren't we in there documenting this? That's what I would like. I'd like to document the whole. I don't thing. know because you're late to the game because it's Wednesday and my surgery is Friday. It, can we put it on hold for a week and set this up at the <laughs> hospital? Do the paperwork we need to do. Do the viewers want this? I think the viewers might want this. They might want to actually see this in action. I don't know about that. What happens on the operating table? Like I see. Do you are you going to be conscious or not or like is it local? Because I would want to be, I mean I'd want to be knocked out before I got to the hospital. Like I want it to be, to me, I want it to be like a hostage situation. I want to be blindfolded, taken away, like drugged, taken away, and I want to wake up in recovery. And then is Liam Neeson going to come and find you? Yeah, that's exactly how I'm going to wake <laughs> up. I'm going to be in the recovery room, and Liam Neeson's going to say, "Come on, let's get out of here." I have a certain set of skills. <laughs> Um, no, I'm going to be out. Um, you know, I think that what they're also going to do is in addition to scooping out scar tissue and whatever, they're also going to be manually manipulating my knee. May oh, so they're going to like, they're going to open up your knee up to the, up to your knee and they're going to like manipulate it, move it around and fix it or something, I guess. Yeah. So, you know, I can, I can bend it on my own about 50 degrees, but if someone, if someone or myself passively pushed, I could get it to about 60. So when I'm in, when I'm on the table, what they're going to do is they're going to, you know, try once they get the scar tissue out, bend it and see how far it can go. Uh, are they? Is there any thought that they might uh, do knee replacement? No, no, no. No, that's good. I like that. Uh, and then, uh, but so you're going to be out because I, I would want to be. I mean, I, they, they, I, I don't even want to know anything. I, I, when do you get? But when do you get knocked out? Do, do you do it in the hospital room or do you do it in the uh, in the OR? They do it in the OR. I mean, from so all my pre other surgeries while I was in the hospital, they, you know, they take you in and then they, you know, hook you up to the IV and stuff. And then uh, usually within, you know, a few minutes of being in there, they knock you out. Yeah. When I get stitches from getting into hockey fights and stuff, I'm, I'm like, hey, could you knock me out? They're like, what? It's just stitches. I'm like, yeah, just knock me out. Um, you look, you knock me out for a colonoscopy. Why can't you do it for stitches? Um, so you're, so I don't, I don't know if they want, if they want me awake for that, I'd, I'd be asking too many questions. Wait, so what's going on now? What are you doing? What, why, why are you doing that? You would ask questions. I yeah. would ask nothing. I'd be like, first of all, this is how I would do it. I just want you to know. And maybe I could do this for your surgery. If you, if you really want this, I could do this. I'll, I'll, we'll talk to the hospital. I will go in there. I'll introduce the doctors. Like it's uh, a basketball game. Right. So, uh, I'll be like from SMU university, Robert Smith. <laughs> No, I don't know. I they don't know if come. I want them that amped. I don't, we know. Could get I don't them, know if I want them going in. You know, we could get them amped, and they could run in. They could be like, "Yeah." And they, who are they going to high five though? That's the only problem. They could high five you, and maybe the anesthesiologist, and we'll, we'll get a little like jock jams going. No, I don't know. I'll think about but it. But what I mean, do they play music in the OR? Do you think? I think so. I when I was in the uh, when I was at Bellevue and I had operations, I asked them, and they said sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I want them. Go, I, maybe I'll go in with the playlist and tell them this is what I want you guys to play. I feel like I'd want the doctors to pick their own playlist. Like, you can listen to anything you want. Just focus on what you're doing. Like classical music or something? <laughs> no, I mean, they could listen. To, I mean, I don't care if they listen to Rage Against the Machine or if they listen to Metallica. As long I don't as know if I want them angry. Huh. No, yeah. but it could get them pumped up. All right, listen. They could listen to anything they want. I don't need the mosh pitting during my what operation. What kind of music, what kind of playlist would you give them? I don't know. It would probably be a variety of different things. Like what? Give me an example. You said classical music. You're going to give them Mozart or no, Beethoven? No, I, I was just saying that because, you know, that you could still focus and, and have that as background music, like elevator music. All right. What what would you say? Like, I, it, you got to have focusable music. You can't. It's got to be like Sting or something. It can't be like, you know, I don't know. And it can't be something they'd sing along to. So it can't be like Billy Joel or Madonna, you know. Because I'd be in there. I'd be like, you could be my lucky star. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, there's somebody here. I'm supposed to operate on. I don't know because I don't want them, you know, dancing around and and forgetting what they're doing either and getting so into the music. Yeah. Can I come visit? Of course. I, I want to come visit. I hate hospitals. You're like the only person I want to visit in the hospital. Of course, of course. Now, what are they going to put you in? They're going to put you in a gown, or uh, what's the deal? 
I don't know. I've asked that myself because I've I've only known it when I'm you know in a gown twenty four seven. So I don't know. I've asked that. Do, what do I bring? What do I wear? When do I shower? I've asked all these questions. You could probably just wear a pair of like Nick shorts or something. I don't know. I think I'd have to wear nothing. <laughs> I, I think I think you're right. They're not going to let you wear anything. I think, I think it's just a hospital gown. Yeah. I don't like those. Can't we do something better for people who are in a hospital? Like, I don't know. Hospital gowns just don't work for me. Especially, like, can I bring my own? Have you ever asked that? I would totally bring my own. I think you can. I think not for the OR, though. Why? I don't want to. Like, they well, say it's sanitary. It's, but It's not <laughs> sterile. It's, but, oh, the one they give me is sterile? They, they <laughs> used it for somebody else. And what if they used it for somebody who didn't make it? I don't want that, like mojo around that's true that's true i don't know if i ever donate money to a hospital like i'm ever that wealthy i'm gonna put what do you think of this now that we're on hospitals i'm gonna put um instead of putting my name on like the front of the building i don't want to do that i am put it in the roof of the ambulance so when you're laying there it says the attempt to save your life is being made possible by michael artsis what do you think of that you like that eh. <laughs> <laughs> well it's better than a building i guess so I, maybe it could say instead of uh, instead of that, it could say you can do it. I don't know. It's something inspirational, no? Something inspirational, maybe. Maybe something inspirational yeah. as opposed to your name. Maybe yeah, I don't need my name on there. You're right. We're yeah. going to do something That'd inspirational. Be It'll be much more fun. So yeah, don't be one of those people who, who do good and then feel the need to tell people that they did good because then that defeats the whole purpose. Exactly. <laughs> I just do it silently. I don't need anybody to know I'm the one who did it. I agree with that. I just put like, you know, be terrific up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or I'll put field. Product placement. Product placement. Exactly. No, I was thinking like that's a good <laughs> message. So I'm gonna be like, um, feel better. I don't know. Get well soon. No. Yeah, that's kind of lame. All right, we, we'll <laughs> figure out something when it, when we get to that point. We'll figure out something. Okay. Um, Work on it. So, all right, so how long before you can get back in the prosthetics? Is this like, you know, are we literally going to be July before you can actually get back in Four to in six them? weeks. Huh? Four to six weeks. Okay. And then four to six weeks. So that's like May. Yeah. Okay. And then in May, do you have to relearn how to walk in them or are you going to be good to go? Well, I don't know. I think I'm going to have uh, therapy, you know, with before I get back in the prosthetics. So... Hopefully it won't be starting from scratch, but right. um, you know, I think if my if the operation works and I can make I can move my knee more, then you know it'll be different being in them. Is there any chance that you're going to get full range of motion 100 percent? Well, full range is 110, and that's probably not going to happen because that's twice that's more than twice what I have now. 110? I can't move my knee 110. Well, if you stand up, you can. If you stand up, yeah. and you can, you know, bend your knee back and you can reach for your foot. Yeah, but that's 100%. No. <laughs> that's 100. It doesn't go past 100. It's 100. It, what is this, it spinal past, tap? It goes, 10, it, it goes to 11. But this one has 11, but you get it 11. I mean, it goes 100%. They're telling you 110%. Maybe you need a, a new a new doc. I, I, I found this thing. I think you sent it to me or Peter did. It's called One Limb for Life, and I'm not really down with this, and I, I don't know how you feel. It's but It's horrible. So under Obamacare, y you're not on Obamacare, but if you were on Obamacare, you would get one limb for life. So you'd actually get a pair because you lost two limbs. Right. But you're a young lady, and, and you're, what, what are you, 32 now? D no, you're 31 still. 32. You are 32. Okay, you're a young lady. You're 32 years old. And you've just gotten these prosthetics. And, um, and, and imagine if you couldn't get another prosthetic, another pair of prosthetics for the rest of your life covered by insurance because of Obamacare. It's a small little thing in the bill. It's a small little thing to a lot of people, but it's really a big thing to anybody who needs prosthetics because the reality is, first of all, I imagine your prosthetics are going to wear out uh, if you wear them for the next 30, 40, well, 50 Well, not years. even wearing out. Like if you have an operation like I'm having, I'm going to need a, you know, to get recasted. I'm going to need a new set after surgery, you know? So you need a whole new set of prosthetics. I thought you just needed a new like, well, the new so like the new sockets. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so then, uh, but also, what happens when technology gets so good that you literally could feel with the prosthetics, or you could literally kick me, or um, I don't know, whatever it is, the technology is going to get so good, 
this is really just the beginning. We're doing so good with this technology. How could we say that in 30 years you're going to still have just this pair of prosthetics? It's just so unfair. And they cost so much. I mean, most people could never afford them. Now, again, you're in a different situation because you have insurance, but this is for people with Obamacare. And I just think onelimbforlife.com, you got to check it out. Onelimbforlife.com, it's spelled out. Just check it out. See what you guys think of it. I think this is bad. And I think it's something that... I mean, not even the technology, but, you know, things change in terms of your life. And if the fact that you can only get one or one set of limbs for your entire life and, you know, you're supposed to be... You're supposed to live off of that. How is one supposed to function normally? You know, you're, the whole goal of the prosthetics is to get you back to normal. But if if you can't, then, you know... Right. It's not really doing a lot for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I think that this is uh, tragic. Uh, you know, we joked around a little bit about uh, the doctor and the hospital, and I was trying to cheer you up a little. Hopefully I did. Now I feel like I should have done this first and done that second because now I feel like I've brought you down. Now you're trying to be Debbie Downer? Well, um, if people go and sign the petition and we're able to fix it, then we're all good. All right, so let's get people to go. How do we do it? Tell me, walk me through. Oh, it's easy. All yeah, I have to you do go, is to go to the to site. There's a link that you know, just sign up, and then you, you. That's it. All right. Well, I'm going to walk people you through it because it's not that it's it's not that clear on the site. This is, you know what? I like the idea of one limb for life, but they didn't make it that clear. Here's the deal, uh, Pete. Scroll up to the top of the page here. Everybody's looking at it. You go to one limb for life dot com, and and here's what you see. Okay, and then you've got to uh, start reading, and you can read all about it. And if you believe in it, you keep scrolling down, and then you see where you can fill out the petition right there. All right, so fill that out if you believe in it, and I think you will when you go there. But check it out in the meantime, onelimbforlife.com, and then go fill that out. Uh, and, and, you know, you're going to help people um, who are really in, in a bad way, who really could be, you know, the one thing I love about you, Tina, is you're such a positive impact on society. And, you know, you work, you're going to continue to go, go to work and get stronger and, and be more active at work and all this stuff. It's a positive, you're inspiring to people. You're going to go talk. I know one day you're going to talk to kids and inspire them at schools and stuff. It's a positive thing and you can be a, such a positive force or you can be stuck in a rut. And we're not doing anything for people by, by doing this. So, look, this isn't something, you're not cheating the system when you get a, a prosthetic. There's no way to cheat the system. Nobody wants to be in the situation that Tina's in or so many people uh, like her are in. So, you know, for what it's worth, it's worth checking this out. And it's worth standing up and saying, you know, this isn't okay. And, and I'm sure that it's just, maybe it's just an oversight. There are lots of little oversights, I'm sure, in Obamacare. And this is probably just one of them. And, and so let's get it straightened out. OneLimbForLife.com. And, right. uh, Obviously, I'm biased, but it just, yeah. it just if you read it all and you read up on it, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. I agree. I agree 100%. And thank you for bringing that to our attention and for sharing it with us. All right, what's the first thing you're going to eat when you get out of the OR? Because I would ask for ice cream. I think that's an excuse to eat ice cream. They don't let you eat right away. To hell with that. I wake up and I want food. Right it's right. happening. I don't know. I think I think they don't let you eat right away because you're still coming off the high off of the anesthesia, and if you eat right away, you might you know vomit it all out. <laughs> all right, but when you're what's the first thing when you're ready to eat? What are you going to ask for? Because they're going to give you hospital food, and you're going to have to send your husband out somewhere. The first thing I want is actually something to drink because you're really thirsty after coming out. Yeah. From surgery, so uh, I just want to down like a gallon of anything to drink. All right, I'm going for a milkshake, but you're probably going to just get water. Probably. Or right. apple juice. Apple juice was my go-to. And what what's the first thing you do when you get home? Like, uh, do you want to get into your bed? you want to play PlayStation? What do you want to do? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to see how much pain I'm in because they're, because they're going to manipulate my knee in the OR. I might feel like, you know, I've exercised like I've never exercised before in my life. That so, it sounds so weird. They're going to be like, I feel like they're going to go in there and they're going to like turn it and move it and spin it around and then shave it and... No, this is why, you know, you dropped the ball. You should have been you should have signed up so you can document it so oh. I would know exactly what they were doing. You're right. You're <laughs> right. I, I there's nothing I could say to that except you're right. And I think the audience would have liked it. Would the would you guys have liked uh this? Um would you guys have liked this? Ben and, and D P and all you viewers, uh Jenny, would you have liked to see behind the scenes us like we, could we have live streamed? Do you think that could have happened? No doctor in the world would let that happen. I wouldn't let that happen if I was a doctor. Yeah, we're going to come in here. We're going to set up like five cameras. Don't worry. We'll be like flies on the wall. We're going to live switch. 
And, and this guy, Michael, he's going to talk you through the whole surgery. See, I couldn't be there, though. I'd have to be in the gallery because if I was there, I'd be like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. How long does this take, Doc? So where would you go to medical school? And uh, what's it like when you deal with people who have prosthetics? Are you? Yeah, that would, uh, that they would be an They ban you from the hospital. What would you say? They ban you from the hospital. Oh, uh, I, I would love nothing more than to be banned from <laughs> every hospital. I hope I never go to. I, hospitals completely creep me out and freak me out. Seriously. I'm a germaphobe. I don't want to be in the hospital. I think oh, they're just overrun with infection. Are you doing anything to keep the infection away? Like, it, I mean, d talk about uh, sterilizing stuff. Tell them to sterilize those utensils they use. <laughs> utensils? Yeah. <laughs> the fork and knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got you laughing. That was my goal. Good luck. I will see you. Thank I'm going to come visit, uh, and uh, you're going to kick I, I I say this all the time. You know this, and, and I, I don't curse on air, but I will say this. Kick ass, Tina. You thank will. You, thank I you. I know you will. Uh, and we look forward to an update when you're uh, ready to come back in here and maybe walk up the stairs bending your knee. I, I hope so, and I can't wait to see you. I'll tell you what. You'll start off running against me because I'm slow. Okay. How's that sound? Okay. And then and then I'll work my way up to Jack? Yes. Then you'll work your way up to Jack. Okay. Sounds like a plan. All right. You're the best, Tina. Thank you so much. Tina verse 7 train.com. T E E N A verse 7 train.com. She took on the 7 train and won, folks. And you can watch her progress not only here, but also on her site, Tina verse 7 train.com. And you can communicate with her there. Thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting her. You've done uh, a great job doing that throughout her recovery. And uh, we really appreciate it. I know she does as well. Thank you guys. Um, all right, so Tina, we're gonna let you go. You know what? I, we're we could. I don't know if you can see this, but we're gonna. We have one thing to get to, and you could stay if you want, or you can you can leave and say goodbye. Um, what do you gotta do? We gotta show this video of this uh, a piece of equipment called the IO Hawk. They're sending us one. It was at the Luxury Tech Show. We also it was also at CES, but we didn't see it at CES. We had it on at Toy Fair. It's really amazing. Um, I think you have the feet up, so you'll be able to watch. So this thing is, uh, I mean, a kid can ride this. It's simple. It's a skateboard that's electric, but it's its just cool. And you have to b use m Jedi mind tricks to make it work. And uh, Peter and I use this. Uh, they're sending us one to do a tech review. I love the Be Terrific red color right there. And it's its expensive now. I think eventually they're going to come down in price. But this thing it just amazes me. And when you get it, it's like a Jedi mind trick. It's just amazing to be able to do this thing. You actually have to use your mind to to roll uh, and to move. And it's just so cool. This little kid, nice kid, he, he was at the Luxury Tech Show showing off his skills. And he could do it. You know, it's so easy. So... I don't know. I thought you liked tech. Maybe you'd want to see that. How, and how did you guys fare in using it? I did pretty good. Pete did pretty good, too. It's a little weird at first. Um, Pete, did you like it? I liked it a lot. I'm really excited. They're sending us one. It's being shipped right now. I got the tracking number. I'm excited. Pete, did you like it? Yeah, it was interesting. It was, uh, were you good at it? You were good at it. Yeah, it was okay. Dippin couldn't get it. Dippin hung out with us, and he couldn't get it. He was really having trouble. It's kind of a trust thing, and it's a believing in yourself thing. Wait, where's your thing to mute it? Why can't I mute this? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, I saw you guys. Didn't you debut it a long time ago? Yeah, on Toy Fair. But we're going to have a tech review, and I think we might bring it to NAB. And at NAB, How um, easy is it here to you go. Here's an interview thing. with the kid. Easy. How much fun are you having with it? A lot. What do you think of this thing? It's really cool. I think this thing is the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. And how do you control it? With your body or, or with your brain. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Awesome. So at NAB, we're going to show it off, and we're going to show it off as a poor man's uh, I call it a poor man's dolly, but it's not. But I think it would be great to be able to shoot while you're riding that thing. It, I found it really easy to use once you got the hang of it. It's a lot of fun. I think I did pretty good on it. Um, I also rode it that night at the Luxury Tech Show, and I was excited about it. I can't wait to get this thing in here. IOHawk.com. IOHawk.com. It's amazing. You're going to want to check it out. Um, and I think it was cool. Pete liked it. Pete did good with it. Uh, what do you think, Tina? You've seen the video now. I think it looks pretty awesome. Yeah. I, think I, so. I don't think I'll be able to get on it, but yeah. no, but that I think you will see. You gotta come on, you gotta like we we. You're positive. You're positive. You gotta be positive. One day you will be able to ride that thing. One day, yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and you're gonna race me. We're gonna run. 
All right, maybe I'll just follow along, you know, like you can pull me with the string or something from behind. Where's the confidence? Where's the confidence? <laughs> Where's the smack talk you talk off the air? <laughs> I'll pull you from a string, exactly. All right, uh, Tina, it was so great to have you on. Thank you so much. Uh, good luck. I know you're going to do great, and we will talk to you uh, on the flip side. I will come visit you in the hospital. Uh, I'll right. do my best to do that, but I think right, I'm going to make it All right, I'll see you happen. at the hospital. All right. All that's, right, bye. Th that's Tina Katz, everyone. That is Peter's sister, and... We will uh, check in with her afterwards. Tina vs. Seven Train dot com. Remember iohawk.com. I'm so excited about this. You got to check out their site. But I'm really excited about getting this thing in here and doing a full tech review. And uh, I got to thank Pete McCarthy from W O R Radio for joining us, talking us uh, talking about a little bit of baseball. I love that you guys are loving baseball talk and sports talk, and we'll have more of that going on. So you're not going to want to miss it. Um, and don't forget, we've got two video game shows starting soon, so we'll keep you posted on all that. This is the Michael Arts' show for today. Tomorrow, we're at a Candlelighters event in New York City. Uh, they're the great charity we told you about, and they've got a great event happening tomorrow. So we're going to be doing the Michael Arts' show from there. Uh, regular time, 4 to 5 p.m., so we'll see you then. I'm Michael Arts' Be terrific.